Okay, y'all, today I'm finna bring this word to y'all. It's gonna be titled, Raised with Christ. You know, it's gonna be titled, Raised with Christ. I'm gonna be reading it from Galatians 3, verses 1 through 17, also 23 through 25. Because you gotta understand that we were raised with Christ, and Christ is at the right hand of the Father. So come with me to Galatians 3. Let's start off with verse 1. It says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is setting at the right hand of God. So it said, seek those things which are above. So we got to look for the things that's not of the earth. Not of the things that are kindly, but of the things that are spiritually, for the things that are righteousness unto God. You know, so we should seek those things that are righteous, such as love, meekness, humility, kindness, peace, joy. Also, the fruits of the Spirit. Then the things we should seek. Honestly, when you accept Christ as your Savior, and He put that Holy Spirit down in you, you receive the fruits of the Spirit. And you should start letting the fruits of the Spirit develop in your life. They should be in your mind, and they should be on your heart at all times. For the fruits of the spirits in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. So the fruits of the spirits are love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, meekness, and temperance. And these right here are the things that we should be seeking. We should be seeking to live in love. That's seeking the things that are above, the things that are in the righteousness, the things that are in heaven. Our minds should be set up on this word of God. Then it says, though, then it says, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. So we know where Christ is at. Christ is at the right hand of God, okay? Then it says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. So now you have to Pay attention on the things above. You got to pay attention to the things above. So maybe you need to meditate upon the word of God. Maybe you got to pray to God. You got to come into acceptance of the Lord. When you set your mind on things above, you got to set your mind on Christ. You got to pay attention to God's word. You got to put it out. You got to put it to work in your life. You got to put it to work. That's why it's an application Bible. See, the Bible is application. You got to apply the word in your life from the things that are above, not on the things on the earth. So, you know, we don't go after chasing kind of things. It's going to give you a little more detail of what I'm trying to say as I read down a little bit farther. But as for right now, go with me to verse 3. <clears throat> for it says, For you died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. So you died for your life is hidden with yourself in Christ, with God. So what that's telling me is that you died to yourself. And allowing you are alive through Christ. Your life is in Christ. The life you now live. The life you now live in. And through, it's, it's not of yourself. It's not of yourself, but it is of Christ. The life we now live, we live on the Christ. We don't live to ourselves. So therefore, if we deny ourselves, we deny our sinful nature to have power over, but we allow the life of Christ, the Spirit, to now direct us and lead us. They said in order to find your life, you have to lose your life. That's what you do. When you're in Christ, you lose your old life and you pick up a new life when you're in Christ. Now let's go down to verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him. You know what? He said that just a plain as day. He said, when Christ, who is our life, appears. See, he said, when Christ, who is our life, appears. See, our life is in Christ. It's not in ourself. Everything that we do should pertain to Christ. It should have a Christ foundation bearing upon it. 
because our life is in Christ. And if our life is in Christ, that means we should do what Christ would want us to do. And that to be a follower of him. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. So he said, put down your sinful nature and put on the righteous nature. The nature that I have now giving you from the Father, which is the Holy Spirit that dwells in you now that should be leading you and guiding you because Christ is in you and that's who you are now. Then down in verse 5 it says, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. Members which are on the earth. He said, put away fornication. He tell you don't fornicate no more. Uncleanness. He said, passions. He said, evil desires. Covetousness, which is idol tree. So now, he said, our sinful nature, like fornication and other things that we allow to rule over us, any sin that we allow to rule over us or control us, he said, and when we submit to them, we are actually committing idolatry. He said we are actually committing idolatry. In other words, he said we are worshiping idols. In other words, he said them are our idols. And that shouldn't be. That shouldn't be. Now go with me over to verse 6. Verse 6 says, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. It said, because of these things, the punishment of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. See, he said, if you want to be disobedient, <laughs> he got a punishment coming for you. See, God do punish you. God don't only love. See, everybody think God just love, but you know what? We got a God that punished for sin too. We got a God that dislikes sin, and God do punish. He said it right there in his word. He said, because of these things, the things I just read about fornication and things, the wrath of God is coming up on the Son of Man. You can call it the anger of God, because wrath means anger. You can call it the punishment of God, because it means that. You can call it the damnation of God, because it means that. But whichever way it's coming, it's coming up on the sons of disobedience. So if I was you, I'd get my life right. <laughs> because you got a right to fear God. You don't want God's punishment. I know I don't. I serve him because I love him. But I thank God because I love him and I serve him. He give me that love back. I ain't got to worry about his anger. I ain't got to worry about his wrath coming up on me. I ain't got to worry about that because I'm on the right side of him. And if you don't know him, I tell you, you need to get on the right side of him too. I'm not joking with you. Take that serious. But you don't want to face God's judgment, God's punishment. Let's go to verse 7. In which you yourself once walked in when you lived in them. So otherwise, we once did all this fornication stuff. All of us at one time and another, before you came to the Father, before you came to the Son, before you came to the Holy Spirit, and allow the righteousness of Christ to work into your life, you did the exact same thing. And he's saying, don't do it no more. And he said, if you continue to do it, no. He said, if you continue to do it, <clears throat> you're probably facing the wrath of God. That's all he's saying. Let's go to verse 8. But now you, yourself, are to put all these angers, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man in his deeds. So otherwise, otherwise he's saying, so you got a part to do in here. He's saying, otherwise, you got to put off that sinful man. You got to quit living that sinful life. You got to start living a life that's right because that's the old man and the old woman. And you ain't supposed to be walking in that no more. You ain't supposed to be living like that no more. You're supposed to have a new life that you're living now. And it's called a life of righteousness on the Christ. And I'm going to show you that because we're going to go to the next verse. But he said you ain't supposed to live in sin no more. You ain't supposed to go out practicing sin no more. You ain't supposed to go out lying, stealing, and cheating no more. Whatever your sins may be, fornication or whatever. That ain't what you're supposed to do. That's the old you. But now you have put on the new you. And it says in verse 10, and it said, and have put on the new man or woman 
who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So now you're a new person. Now you're a new person. And by your being a new person, that means you got to be doing new things. You can't be doing all that lying, deception, hopping around from bar to bar, club to clubs, and jumping around, doing everything that go against God, but you're going to tell you you're a Christian. You're going to tell me you're a new person, but you still got the same old problem and the same old sin. But he said, if you're a new person, live like a new person. That's what the word said. And then it goes on to say that where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, slave nor free, but Christ is all in all. So when it all boils down, it's all about Christ. It's all about living and walking in the righteousness of Christ. That's what it's all about. Christ is the all in all. He's our beginning. He's our end. He's our alpha. He's our omega. See? But you got to put off the old man in order to put on the new man. But if you want to hold on to the old man, guess what? You ain't going to get the new man. And guess what? You might be facing God's wrath. I'm just telling you what the word said. I said, you might be facing God, right? only God makes that judgment. But I can tell you what his word said. So even in Paul, Paul says in Romans 12, 2, he said, renew the mind. So you can put on the new man. You got to renew the mind so that you got to put on the new man. Philippians 4, 8 tell you what you should think on. So it's getting your idea what you should think on. But you should think on the whole word of God. You should meditate upon it and live by it according to the New Testament so that you can have a life that's right. Okay, that's the way you got to do that. But let's go on to verse 12. Therefore, as elected God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercy. He tell you what to put on now. Put on tender mercy, kindness, humility, humility meekness, long-suffering, Bear with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. So you got to forgive each other. You got to forgive each other. You got to be meek. You got to be merciful. You got to be kind. You got to be compassionate. You understand? You got to be respectful. So this is what the Word of God said. This is the new you. This is the new you. This is what you really put on. Okay, now let's go on down to verse 14. What it say in verse 14? But above all these things, but above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And he said, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and it don't mean a straight line. It's the bond of perfection, which meaning it's the completion. Love is what completes. It's the bond of completion, of completion perfection. Love makes everything works in harmony. So, when you be kind, do it out of love. When you give mercy, do it out of love. When you be forgiven, do it out of love. Because love is what makes it complete. Love is what makes it complete. Now, verse 15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. 16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and encouraging one another and psalms and hymns and the spiritual song with grace in your heart to the Lord. Verse 17 said, And whatever you do in words or deeds, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And whatever you do in words or deeds, do all to the name of the Lord Jesus. Make, make sure whatever you do that Christ be recognized. Make sure whatever you do in words or deed, make sure Christ be recognized. So Christ shall be seen in you no matter what you do. No matter what you do, Christ shall be seen in you. And then you give thanks to God the Father. And then verse 23 said, And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to man. No. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to man. So whatever you do, do it 
completely unto the Lord with your full heart into it. And I honor and respect and love out of God. Do it out of reverence and respect to God. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. And that reward is eternal life. And you can receive that if you do what's right. But you got to remember you raised with Christ. And by you being raised with Christ, you got to live through Christ right here on this earth. You got to let Christ rule in your life through the Holy Spirit that the Father had indwelled in you and take off the old man and put on the new man, Jesus Christ. You got to think his way. You got to act his way. You got to do things this way. That's what a Christian life is all about. That's what serving God is all about. That's what it's all about. Being righteous. Being righteous in your everyday life. So, I would like to say, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, today is a good day to allow Him to be your Savior. But it's an even better day to make Him the Master of your life, the Lord of your life, so that you can walk in that new man that you have become. So like He said in Colossians, put off the old man or woman and put on the new man, Jesus Christ. Male or female, it doesn't make a difference. You got to live according to Christ. So, remember to check me out on my channel, Thomas Patterson on YouTube. I have got to continue to bless you and take care of you. I want all of you to know that I love you and I appreciate you taking time out to look at my videos. And I hope somewhere along the line that they've been a blessing to you. Maybe you can share with someone else and encourage them as you encourage yourself. Maybe you learn something from it that you can pass on to somebody else. But one thing I want you to know, with Christ, there's hope. With the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, there's faith, there's hope, and love. But the greatest of them is love. And I say, if you know what I know, You'll stay away from God's wrath. You don't want to see it. You don't want to touch it. All I'm doing is saying, take it easy.